Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 terrifying space photos NASA can't explain. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Pluto slug. Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of new information back from our little ex-planet, Pluto. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs, dare I say, are slowly moving across the surface of the planet. Check it out. It reminds me of the episode of SpongeBob, where the gang, you know, rides a rock across the ocean floor. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are delivering a pizza on Pluto, okay? They could be just in the weeds, they could be busy. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum. Scientists believe so far the reason for all these lines is that the planet is breathing in a way. If that sounds creepy, it's because it kind of is. The planet's cooling and heating and it's kind of moving around, but we'll leave some room open for space slugs because you know what, at this day and age, you never know. I've seen enough Avenger movies, I'm like, mm, could be space worms. Number nine, Mima's moon. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Just kidding, this one's actually really close. It's Saturn, it's right, right there. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn in total has 82 moons, including this one, Mimas. A moon that looks oddly familiar. Why do I feel like it's gonna just blast us all the smithereens? Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Which way is it pointing here? That's, that really matters. Saturn's smallest innermost moon is causing quite the stir here on Earth. About a month ago, researchers discovered that this moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball. Something is sloshing around inside. Its gravitational pull is a little off. It's kind of, it's just grooving around in the solar system, you know? Mima could potentially be housing a liquid ocean. Yep, we got more water in space. It's pretty close too. If that was the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would have to be rewritten. Number eight, black hole helix. Imagine looking, peering through a telescope and then you see this. I would throw up right into my telescope. This is a galactic jet. It shot out of a black hole at the center of the M87 galaxy. It's pretty scary looking. This helix shot out a whopping 8,000 light years. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's so far I can't even fathom how far that is. You know, like my brain won't allow me to really picture that. This sounds like a threat, really, but I'll remind you that the M87 galaxy is 55 million light years away from us. So we're not gonna get any galactic jet on our hands anytime soon, know what I mean? But just how does something like this happen? Astronomers in New Mexico discover that this massive jet is caused by a corkscrew-shaped magnetic field. What in the witchcraft, like what? It's like a space undertow made out of gravity. That doesn't sound jarring at all. According to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, this is the longest magnetic fields ever found in a galactic jet. Which is fine, that's the first time I've heard of that. I'm like, that's, you can take that rain, enjoy it. That's, we're not gonna try and beat you. It's stuff like this where I ask myself why I'm worrying about a phone bill. Humans are so tiny compared to this, it's insane. We don't matter. Hey, uh, number eight, we don't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Number seven. Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot. That's just a nightmare in itself. It's so big, always going, no idea why. Can't even think about it. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something almost just as interesting, if not more, dare I say. Jupiter's clouds. It feels like you can just put your arm out and touch the silky space sky. It's beautiful, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. It's also quite scary. This big ball of hydrogen is quite mysterious below these clouds. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up than they ever thought it could go. They've also found constant storms at both the North and South Pole, and winds so powerful that the planet's magnetic magnetic fields are literally being moved around. That's how strong the wind is. Your skin would just blow off. You'd be a skeleton just standing there. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space on MA10. Number six, Mars trees. This looks like moldy bread almost. What in the hell, what are we looking at here? Is this actually a photo, a real photo from Mars? Are those trees? There's not a chance here. Matt Damon grew potatoes on Mars in the movie The Martian, but I don't think he can grow any pine trees anytime soon. What you're looking at here is still pretty insane. Due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide frost, dark sand is sliding down the frosted side of the dune, so it makes it look like there's trees on the planet Mars. Sun-heated carbon dioxide ice, that's just, I, I read that and I go, what? What does that even mean? Where do I start with this? We thought we found a giant alien back in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 flew by and it looked like a face was in the planet. Remember that? It looks like a Jabberwocky, it's just lying getting a suntan. This one here is in an optical illusion. It's just weird space science. Number five, smooth moon. When we think of moons in the sky or like how other planets have other moons, we think of them as our own. 
Just a big ball of cheese in the sky. A big sphere, it's got craters, it's pale. We get it, right? Well, as we've seen so far in this list, some moons can look like the Death Star, and some moons can look like chewed gum, apparently. Saturn's small moon Atlas looks like a UFO. It's not a sphere at all. It literally has the shape of a UFO. How scary is that? NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017, and it almost looks like two moons have crashed into one another, and then now it has a ring-like edge to it. When new photos came back after discovering this moon way back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. In 4K, they're like, oh, it's not even the pixels, it's actually really smooth. A smooth moon, you say? <laughs> Let me take a look here. This little smooth moon in the sky, little pervert. Number four, dead galaxies. This one sounds scary, dead galaxies. Guardians of the dead galaxy. New research from NASA, including the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in northern Chile, they found six different dead galaxies in total. They're all like, that's one, that's two, and they're like, hey, we found four, all dead, horrifying. How does this happen? Let's look into it. These dead galaxies had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing at that point. It's kind of like when your car battery dies, only this is on a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to new questions we didn't even know we had. Like what led to these galaxies to die anyways? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast and hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight onto the future of the studies, which she said, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy's center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be out there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos to come back and just, you know, start this fire up, just a big, someone get a big lighter and just go and just light it back up. Alas, new life. Is that Thor? Welcome back. Number three, solar flares. Our lives literally revolve around the sun. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, tan lines, obviously. But sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she gets a little cray cray. Sometimes she gets a little and then she spurts out lava and scares us all. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yep, like I said, she's moody. This creates a stream of radiation. It's called solar wind. Now, normally this is a beautiful event to see. We have many photos of it now. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this specific radiation. Beautiful, but really scary when you think about it. This past October, a large solar flare was spotted, and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is pretty strong, especially when you look at it as a, you know, on a planetary scale. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington Event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking, literally shocking, some telegraph operators. Like if that happens again, and it's even stronger this time, we're looking at huge power outages on a massive scale. Imagine talking to someone on your iPhone and it blows up. Right in the middle of Avatar 2, boom, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. We're all crying in public. Number two, the space crab. Is the multiverse collapsing? What, what is this? The appropriately named space crab nebula was discovered back in 1054. Yeah, way back then astronomers looked into the sky and saw this new bright star. They saw it during daytime. That's how they knew something was up. What they were observing at the time was a supernova explosion. How spectacular is that? This was when the crab nebula was born. It's not too far away either. It's just a mere, you know, 6,500 light years tucked away in the constellation Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're watching, you're like, oh, no way, I'm a Libra. I'm like, get out of here. What do you know? The image of the space crab here was captured over the course of three months. NASA put together 24 exposures captured by, of course, our Hubble. The orange glow we see, those are literally star remains, just large pockets of hydrogen. The interesting part here with the space crab is back in 2005, over the course of 10 Hubble exposures from September to November, these waves can be seen expanding outwards, waves coming from the nebula's pulsar. Space is so scary. We have one moon to worry about here. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in our space neighborhood. I'm terrified. And finally, number one, mystery wave. More waves coming in hot, really hot this time around. If you've seen Interstellar, this next one should hit close to home. I'm not a fan of wave pools or waves in general. My stupid head just bobbing around in the ocean, that's, that's peril, that's, that's a nightmare situation. I can't swim too well. I don't know, I'm too lanky. I'm like a piece of seaweed floating around. The largest wave ever seen in the entire solar system, of course, I had to save this one for last. On a planet a little closer to the sun, Venus, the pressure in the atmosphere can cause some massive waves. Back in 2015, a Japanese spacecraft zoomed by and caught this phenomena. Usually clouds there will move around 100 meters a second, but these clouds, these massive ripples, stayed in the same place for four days, way above the ground level also. They were just like, huh? 
and then they got stuck there. Due to a runaway greenhouse effect, temperatures on Venus hit around 460 degrees Celsius. So this wave may have been powerful enough to change the climate for those four days. Pretty crazy. I feel like Canada, we get a lot of weather changes, but this, this is next level. Thanks so much for tuning in to Most Amazing Top 10. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time for some more space mysteries. Keep an eye out for the sky. Bye.